According to the book of Judges, chapter 11, I want to talk to you just a little bit this morning about this man named Jephthah. About the only thing we ever think about, or I don't know, I said, we, I don't know about y'all, but me, every time I hear the name Jephthah, I think, well, he's that man that promised the Lord that if he let him win the battle, he would offer a sacrifice of the first thing that he met when he come home. Well, the first thing. And he saw that was living was his daughter. And that's the thing I think of every time I hear the word Jephthah. Well, last, not, not before last, I guess it was, I sat down to read the Bible a while. And, and I opened to the book of Judges and, and I, I looked at the first verse. And this word jumped out at me. I never thought of it, I guess, as I would have read this verse many, many times. But it says, now Jephthah. I wondered why the now was there. Well, I also thought about this. Have you ever heard anybody uh, say they'll never mount to a hill of beans? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a southern term, I guess. Never mount to a hill of beans. Uh, they no way in the world God could use him or her. Their life's just been too rough. Uh, have you ever felt yourself like God would never use me. If you would have known me 61 years ago, you would have looked at this boy and I said, there's no way in the world God would ever use him for anything. I couldn't look you in the white of the eye. I was too bashful. I was shy. How I ever got around you asking my wife to marry me is beyond me till the day. Uh, but somehow I mustered up the courage to ask her, can you marry me? And she said, yes, I thank you. <laughs> no, not really. But, uh, but, but here was Jephthah. Probably people thought Jephthah would never amount uh, to anything. Before we look at this now, Jephthah, uh, let me give you a little bit of background. You may know this, may not know it, but if you don't, you can read it. It's all right here in the Bible. Uh, but the book of Judges covers a period of about 305 years after the death of Joshua. As you read through the book of Judges, it's very easy to see that uh, Judges is a book of failures. Uh, they failed uh, at everything through the book of Judges that they start to do. Israel failed to conquer and possess the whole land as God had told them to do. They didn't do it, that, they failed at that. And they could have conquered the entire land uh, as God had told them to do, not in their own strength, but in the strength of God. They could have conquered that whole land because God would, would see to it. Yeah. Uh, they lost what they won seven times by going back. God would bless them. Then they would fail and they would go back to serving strange gods once again. Seven times uh, they were oppressed and conquered by uh, the heathen nations around them. Uh, at this time, there was no king in Israel. They did that what was right in their own eyes. We're told that in chapter 17 and verse 6. The name Judges comes from this, the uh, 12 men and one woman who judged Israel. <clears throat> uh, and uh, they, uh, they, I said judge, they, they ruled and governed Israel. Uh, and uh, there's 12 men and one woman. That woman's name was Deborah. And uh, uh, Jephthah was the ninth of these 13 judges uh, that uh, governed Israel. The judge just before him, the name was Jair. He ruled for, I believe if I remember right, it was like uh, 22 years. In those 22 years, uh, he allowed Israel to be brought uh, under the control of the heathen nation uh, the Amorites that were around him. And now it comes down uh, to a time when the Amorites had crossed the Jordan 
and encamped to battle against, again, against Israel. And they knew that their hope was very small. And as you read down toward the end of last, of uh, the, the last few verses of last 10, uh, chapter 10, um, and it said in verse 17, then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled, assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, what man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now, Jephthah. He was the one that they were going to bring back. And if you remember the story about <coughs> Jephthah, he was, the Bible says it right here in this verse, says now Jephthah, the Gilead, was a, a, a mighty man of valor. He was a mighty man of valor. He was the son of a harlot, and, uh, and Gilead begat Jephthah. Uh, now, God didn't have to tell us all that, but he did. He had his reason for it. Now, I can't tell you what all of his reason was, but I believe I can tell you some of his reason for telling us <coughs> what he did about this man, Jephthah, here in this first verse of chapter 11. He tells us this. In fact, everything in this verse is good about Jephthah. Now, Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a, a mighty man of valor. Uh, he was uh, a, a Gilead. His, his father's name was Gilead. We're told that right here in this verse. Uh, the uh, being uh, a Gilead tells us the region, the region where he lived, uh, just uh, on the east side of the Jordan River. Uh, but he was a mighty man of valor. The word valor simply means strength. Yeah. It means a uh, warlike, uh, a, a leader in war. Now, up to this time, Jephthah had not been a leader in war. He was just a, an old ruffian boy. Uh, but the Bible said he was the son of a harlot. Now, he had nothing to do with that. Yeah. No more than you had to do with your birth. And that's nothing looking down on Jephthah. Like I said, God didn't have to tell us that his mother was a prostitute. He didn't have to tell us that, but he did. But it's nothing looks down on Jephthah, looks down on his daddy, if anything, because he said, and Gilead <coughs> begat Jephthah. What about this? Jephthah was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. Was he born before uh, Gilead was married? Or was he unfaithful to his wife uh, after uh, in, in that time? Well, I don't know. We're not told. But we do know this, that his wife, in the next verse, said, And Gilead's wife bare him sons. So we know Gilead had a wife and he had other children other than Jephthah. Now, when Jephthah come into this family, we don't know. I don't know. Maybe Brother Russell or Brother Robert may know, but I don't know. I couldn't find it in the Bible, whether it was before he was married or after. But there's one thing about it. He raised the boy yeah. in the way you look at it. Or as you go on down, uh, his wife, he said, uh, bury him many sons. And they grew up, just like most children do, they grew up. And when they grew up, the Bible said, they thrust uh, Jephthah, uh, thrust, thrust out Jephthah. In other words, they run Jephthah off. They told him to get out and don't come back. And said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Well, he was just a half-brother to all of those other boys. And they didn't want him there. And 
And they told him why they didn't want him there. Because uh, you're the, the son of a strange woman. He didn't, uh, he was not a full brother to them. And I do know this in the Old Testament that, the, and even in the, the New Testament for a time, the oldest son, uh, the firstborn of his father, was the one who would inherit whatever his father had. You remember that guy in the New Testament that Jesus talked about when uh, uh, even, the, even the, uh, the prodigal son's uh, brother? Let's just take him for instance. Uh, I'll tell you about the one I'll start to in a minute, but you remember the prodigal when he took his inheritance? He, that wasn't really his inheritance, but his daddy smiled upon him and gave him his a portion and he left, went out and squandered it. I know that's a parable, but he went out and squandered it right to sleep. And then when he come home, his son, his brother was angry because he said to his daddy, he said, have I not been here all this time and, and you've never killed me a, a kid? You never made a party for me? Well, he was the oldest son. He would inherit it, whatever his daddy had, but there was, a, there was a catch to it. You had to stay home and care for your daddy until he died, yeah. and then you would inherit everything the daddy had. Well, Jephthah, he was the oldest son. I don't say he was, but he probably was. But uh, they did not want him a part of their father's inheritance because he was not a full yeah. uh, brother of them. So they put him out of the house, ran him off. Uh, and then in verse three, it said, and Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelled in the land of Tob. Uh, that, that, uh, that place called Tob, uh, that was uh, in Syria, just, just across from, uh, from Israel. And he went there and, and he dwelt there. And look at this next part of that verse. And there gathered vain men to Jephthah and went with him. Now what kind of a character was Jephthah? He must have been some kind of a character in those days because vain men. That word vain, I looked that up to be sure I knew what he was talking about. And it said worthless. Yeah. There was a, a, a worthless people in Tob and around, I guess. They gathered themselves to Jephthah. Didn't say Jephthah went out looking for him to get him a band of men. They just gathered themselves to it. You ever heard that, that term, uh, birds of a feather flock together? Well, that's about what was happening here as I see it. It was all of these worthless people. Probably wouldn't strike a lick at a snake if it was trying to bite them. I don't know what kind of people they were, but they were vain men. And they just, something about Jephthah just had a drawing power to these people. He was a mighty man of valor. They could see that. And so here was a strong man, a, a warlike man, and these people just gathered themselves to him because I guess of who he was, the kind of man he was. But now here he is with all of this group of people. And uh, in process of time, the children of Ammon made war against Israel. Now this is when uh, the now Jephthah came in. They saw that they were going to be attacked again. So they sent for Jephthah to come home. Uh, and he had some things to say about that as you go on. Did you not run me off? Yeah. That was not his words, but he uh, uh, said, uh, they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you coming to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, uh, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. 
we can read on and talk on, but for the sake of time, just let me just kind of come down and paraphrase it a little bit more than what I already have. He went back with them and uh, he fought their battle. He won their battle. And he was the ninth judge uh, in Israel. And he, he governed Israel for six years before he died. Six years. Uh, and uh, you remember the story as I started. You remember it, I'm sure. When he told God, if you'll let me uh, win this battle, I'll offer you, make a, a sacrifice of the first thing I see. Well, God heard him. Here was a man that probably would have been looked upon by the average as a man like that could never be used of God. And what kind of guy he was. He was a strong man, a man of valor, but he had all of these worthless people gathered around him and uh, who knows what. But God had raised him up. When everybody thought maybe he was a nothing or nobody, the son of a harlot. You know, they even accused, accused Jesus of being the son, uh, uh, being Ill, illegitimately born, not of a harlot, but being illegitimately born. I guess they would have called him Mary. But, but uh, I don't think babies are illegitimate. I think parents are yeah. illegitimate, to be real honest with you. Baby can how to do it. But uh, as you go on down and read, You'll find how Jephthah led their army, won their battles, and became their judge for six years and judged Israel well. But here was a man that was not the cream of the crop, but God used him and made him the head of Israel for those six years. Well, I'm just glad God can use anybody, aren't you? Amen. Yes. He could if he couldn't use anybody, Amen. he never would have used me. Sometimes I feel like my use is just about useless. But anyway, here I am. And uh, I appreciate what the Lord has done and what he is doing. Uh, and uh, just for people like and how God showed us something about Jephthah's life. It should say something to us. God is a great, great God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get that verse of song, Brother Steve. What do we Yes, sir. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? All right, thank you, Brother Steve, and thank you all for listening to the old stammering man. I appreciate it. Let's go to work.